Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, August 22nd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. It's been about a year since the bipartisan Chips and Science Act passed, and to allocate the $39 billion in taxpayer-funded subsidies and other incentives, the Biden administration has brought in a team of former investment bankers, private equity investors, and management consultants. Todd Fisher is the chief investment officer for the CHIPS program office inside the Commerce Department. Here's how he described the group's purpose. It is something that the U.S. government has almost never done and certainly has not done for a very long period of time, working with very well-capitalized, sophisticated, some of the world's largest companies to figure out a way to incent them to do more in this country so that we can build the semiconductor supply chain here. To do that in a way that really is effective with those companies requires a different way of thinking. It requires a different type of talent. And it requires having people that understand the industry and understand how to engage with, negotiate with, work with companies of that nature. But are Wall Street insiders the right people to dole out government money? With us to discuss that is WSJ reporter Yuka Hayashi. Yuka, remind us about the Chips and Sciences Act. What was its goal and how was it supposed to help? The CHIPS Act is one of President Biden's signature economic policy programs, and it is aimed at reviving manufacturing of semiconductors in the U.S. And there are a couple of goals. One is to strengthen the supply chains for chips. And the need for this became very obvious during the pandemics when we had serious shortages of semiconductors, and that caused shutdowns of American auto plants, etc. So that's one of the goals for this. And the other one is the national security goal. The chips is used for everything from microwave to cell phones to advanced weapons. And people who control chips will also be controlling technologies linked to all of this. And China is quickly developing its own semiconductor industry. And the U.S. really wants to thwart China's advancement in this industry. There's this team within the government that's tasked with allocating those funds, which is filled with these Wall Street insiders. Can you tell us a little bit about who they are? So the Commerce Department is putting together a very small group of elite financial industry experts. A lot of came from investment banks like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan. Some of them are private equity specialists. The guy who is heading this team, Todd Fisher, is a former senior executive of KKR, which is a big private equity firm. Why has the Commerce Department brought in this team? Why not just use existing government resources? So there are two reasons why they have tapped these folks. One is that the uh, Commerce Secretary, Gina Raimondo, often says that we want to be a good steward of taxpayer money. So they want to make sure that the uh, money is distributed in efficient ways. And these folks have the expertise. Another reason is that the uh, chips industry is a very sophisticated industry with very complex technology. So they want to make sure that people who have the experience of dealing with the financial aspect of the industry are put in charge of this program to distribute $39 billion in government subsidies. How unusual is this move? It's actually very common for the U.S. government to bring in senior people from Wall Street. But it's very unusual that they are building a whole team from scratch by um, hiring, recruiting private sector folks like these. What's it like inside the team? The team members like to call themselves a startup within the government. They all joined in the past several months at the beginning of the year. They only had five people and now they have close to 40 people. So everyone is new. They walk out of the huge Commerce Department building close to the White House and they walk in this pretty crowded office and they walk in cubicles and A lot of them have not (laughs) walked in cubicles for a long time. So it's a very interesting dynamic that you see out there. 
I can imagine they also must be facing, you know, some amount of political pressure, particularly given that elections are coming up in 2024. That's right. That is something uh, we have to watch very closely. So these folks are are brought in to make decisions based on data, advanced financial technology analysis. But at the same time, this program is going to face a lot of political pressure from uh, politicians who want to invite investments into their own districts. And also the president himself wants to make sure that this program is going to work alongside his political goals. How does the semiconductor industry feel about this group allocating the funds? For now, they seem to be working quite well together. And I've spoken with some of the folks from the semiconductor industry, and they say that these people are learning very quickly, seem to be asking the right questions. So yeah, we'll see. It's been about a year since the bill passed. Is it possible to say overall whether it's made an impact, or is a year even enough of a significant milestone for such a massive bill? The funds from this program have not been distributed. So we are still in a stage where companies are putting in their applications. But we actually have seen the impact of this program because private companies have started investing in the semiconductor industry. And when will those funds be allocated? So the Commerce Department has not said when exactly the money will be handed out. But folks in the industry expect some announcements will probably be made toward the end of this year. That was our reporter, Yuka Hayashi. And by the way, if you want to hear more from Todd Fisher at the Commerce Department, check out yesterday's episode of our sister podcast, The Journal. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.